welcome everyone who has joined just now uh, good afternoon to all so we are starting our third session of the day by trivandapuram chapter trivandapuram uh, chapter sorry uh, the topic is remote scrum a retrospective uh, before we begin the session i would like to uh, thank our founding sponsor innovation route it is a leading consulting and training, uh, training service provider helping organizations to achieve business agility and beyond it is one of the leaders and pioneers of niche publishing services and well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders authors and creators please visit www.innovationroots.com for to see their upcoming summits and training thank you and next i would like to thank our sponsor jail so jail is a product offering from tata consultancy services limited it is a purely cloud based enterprise agile planning tool along with devops capabilities enterprises can use jail to adopt agile practices or scale across multiple scrum and kanban teams using enterprise scaling frameworks such as safe disciplined agile less and more you can try out jail for free up to 20 users users for one year by signing up at jail.io or reach out to us for any inquiries or exclusive product demo Check out the Jail page on Jail Network India website for more information. Thank you. Now I would like to uh, ask Rajit to take over this conversation. He is going to be the moderator for today's panel discussion. Thank you. Over to you, Rajit. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prakash. So it's uh, wonderful to be a part of this discussion. Uh, uh, about me, I. have been working with uh, uh i am a 16 year old uh, testing professional working in the industry i've got a few certifications uh in agile uh, with pm psm pspo istqb agile and currently i'm working with a company called uh, confiance it in uh, trivandrum uh i haven't been uh, a full fledged uh, agile practitioner uh, in my career uh, even though i had a few certifications uh, that's something which i am uh, learning even right now uh, on how to be uh, an agile practitioner how to uh, understand the different aspects of uh, being agile and the various practices um, so we have uh the topic for today is uh, uh remote scrum uh, the reason why we chose this particular topic was that uh everybody have uh, or at least some of the people who practice a bit of scrum has a perception that uh, uh the scrum team has uh always needs to be co-located even though this scrum guide doesn't uh, mention anything related to that so we wanted to uh, find out or uh, give out our views on view how the scrum practices have changed during the pandemic or uh, how the scrum practices has uh, improved uh, during the course of last year uh, one of the other aspects that we might uh discuss is also related to the uh changes in the scrum guide uh which came out a uh, few months back and we have our panelists uh, we have four uh, uh panel members in this discussion uh sunita shajina ratish and uh, prasad so i would request uh, sunita to introduce herself first okay thank you rajit so hi everyone uh, good afternoon myself sunita having about uh, 15 years of experience in it industry uh, have played uh, different roles like test management then project management uh, account management etc and uh, right now working as a qa head in sixware technologies um other than this i am a certified scrum master and uh, practicing scrum since 2016 uh 
uh, also um, have certifications in I, I, uh, ITIL and ISDQB. That's about me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sunita, for your introduction. Uh, Shajina, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, uh, Rajat. Yes, could you please? Uh, yes, now we can see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rajat. And thanks to Agile Network India also, like uh, for inviting me to this particular panel. So uh, myself, uh, Shajina Shaul Hamid, uh, I have been working in software quality assurance for past 12 plus years. I've got an opportunity to work in different domains uh, like uh, banking, insurance, healthcare, transportation, etc. Uh, I have got the privilege to be uh, a, a appraisal team member in world's first CMMI version 2.0 uh, in 2019. The standard got released in 2018 March. Uh, 2018 March and first appraisal was held in 2019 January and it was a privilege to be part in the, that particular appraisal. Uh, I've got experience in implementing different standards like ISO 9001 uh, quality management system, ISO 27001, ISO 13485262622 and different international standards. There are certain standards which is generic as well as certain standards which are very specific to the domains like automotive uh, banking, insurance, healthcare, etc. I'm also a certified uh, ISO 27001 lead auditor, got certification in ISO 9001 as a lead auditor. I'm also ISO 13485 lead auditor. I've got certifications in uh, ISDQB risk manager as well. So that's about myself. Thank you, Shajina. That's, uh, that's quite a lot of certifications. <laughs> So, uh, Ratish, I think now we'll have a different uh, kind of panelist because he is working with uh, uh, quite a few financial organizations um, as a consultant. Uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, Rajit. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Rajit, I would like to uh, thank you for inviting me for this panel discussion. So myself, Ritesh, and um, I am the founder of uh, uh, AppFabs Inc. and QAGuru. Uh, I have around 20 years of experience in software uh, industry. Uh, I graduated from College of Engineering Trantrum and uh, started my career as a software tester from Trantrum itself and got some certifications in software testing, performance testing, etc. Then I got a chance to work with the major, uh, some of the major engineering vendors like GE, Snyder, Rogers, CAVC, Tel, Samsung, Apple, etc. Then currently I am uh, connecting from Canada, but uh, my operations and companies both at Trantrum and uh, in Canada. So, uh, in fact, I got a chance to present uh, uh, around 15 papers in international conferences and uh, got many awards you know, for presenting the best uh, leadership papers uh, in one of the prominent uh, conference like QAA. Um, now I am uh, handling uh, all the Canadian operations, basically working with the financial domains. Yeah, that's a quick intro about me. Thank you, okay. Rajiv. Yeah, so uh, probably we'll have a, a good uh, discussion related to your uh, uh, activities on uh, information security as well as your uh, presentations that you had done. So thank you of for course. being part of the panel. Thank uh, you. So uh, our Final panelist, uh, Mr. Prasad. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon please. to all. And yeah. Yeah. am I audible? Yes. 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 Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thank you so much for having here, having me here. Actually, I got 16 years of experience and into operations. I started my career as a call center executive, then moved into IT and uh, working into projects and all. I'm certified. Uh, uh, Prince 2 and Scrum Master certification, Kanban 
level two certification i used to 20000 certifications um, i have received yet and i'm also a passionate trainer and i i'm also certified a corporate trainer um, uh, and i do uh, trainings like behavioral training soft skills and scrum agile kanban trainings along with this yep thank you so much oh, okay so uh, that was uh, okay, sorry uh, quite interesting like uh, you started your career uh, with uh, being uh, you worked in uh, uh, a call center. call center i think i also started my career uh, in in working as a call center executive so that's interesting to hear uh, okay so probably i'll start the first uh, uh, discussion point with prasad uh, like uh, one second i'm how sorry you, how did you between uh, that's it but uh, can, can i request all the panels to turn panelists to turn on their camera yeah sure yeah. sorry for that because currently so, uh, uh, you see uh, yeah so i think some someone else is also Okay. Um, okay. Rajit, I am having some network issues, so I would like to stay uh, without owning the camera. Okay, okay. So probably we'll try to work something out when Sunita is speaking. Okay. So uh, first uh, discussion point for uh, Prasad. Uh, yeah. Prasad, do you feel that the Scrum practices has changed drastically? Uh, because of people starting to work from home or uh, uh, what is your failure on that? Exactly. Definitely there's a, a drastic change, I can say, because uh, it's all sudden when we started implementing, I think most of the companies are new to Agile and Scrum and everything right now. It's been like one, one and a half year. Some of the teams are just getting into it. And at the point, like sudden at the morning, we get a not notice saying that, yes, it's a work from home from next week or tomorrow or something. So uh, when we started working from home, it, it took some time to you know respond to change. Uh, so there is like, we don't have the proper communication. Uh, it's not a face-to-face -face communication because we need to adopt to the tools and uh, so and, and and making the people to go along with their personal life and so it's 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 entirely uh, a drastic change like um, i can say the training methodology completely changed earlier we used to give a training without slides and now we have to depend upon the tools so everything now we we are more into um, depending on a mediator kind of thing there should be a mediator between contact someone earlier it was always face to face you go and talk to them get the impediment cleared and understand the qualities but it's not now we have to depend on network uh, the tools availability and the person's availability so it's entirely a change okay okay um but but uh uh, when we talk about Scrum, the members usually passive. So, do you think that uh, uh, just because the people started work from home, uh, uh, there might have been uh, difficulties in the way people were working? I'm sorry, your voice is breaking. I don't know. Maybe it's for me or okay. So uh, I'll, I'll just uh, ah, yes. uh, I'll just rephrase the question. So uh, usually the Scrum teams uh, they are cohesive, and uh, because of that, uh, the way they work, the way they interact, uh, is like uh, everything is gelling together. So. Do you think just because the people started working from home, uh, there have been uh, difficulties uh, on the way they work? Yeah, definitely, because they have to, um, earlier, it's again, depends upon the psychology. When you come to home and when you sit in a professional manner, when you sit in your chair, you have a mode of working 
you sit and you take a tree break uh, and you come and sit because you see everywhere working people around. But when you are sitting at home, um, when it's it's one of the challenges is like you have to sit along with your parents and the family, kids and also you always need to motivate. That's the biggest challenge I felt, you know, uh, during this scrum, which the scrum team is having facing. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, Sunita, uh, the next query would be like, uh, we understand the uh, master was supposed to play a, a very big, a very big role uh, uh, when we took into consideration the earlier scrum guide. Uh, is it still the scrum master who is going to play a key role, or has the responsibilities changed? Uh, with the new scrum guide coming in? I don't think uh, the responsibility has been changed from scrum master. Uh, so without any doubt, I could say scrum master is the one who play the key role here. OK, uh, scrum master, uh, um, what he does is he facilitates all the activities. Uh, you can say the scrum uh, ceremonies, actually, uh, not the activities, mm -hmm. uh, scrum ceremonies that are happening in scrum. OK, um, uh, say it be uh, sprint planning, daily stand up, uh, sprint review, uh, retrospective, et cetera, et cetera. And he should be more cautious or he has to take extra care in directing the team uh, towards a sprint goal. OK. So in order to take extra responsibilities, uh, the first and foremost thing needed is uh, to know each of your team members. Uh, without knowing each, each of your team members, you cannot uh, uh, do the scrum uh, effectively. So uh, what are the things you need to know? Uh, where he is located and uh, what is his workload? his communication style, et cetera, et cetera. Only then the Scrum Master could organize um, running the Scrum uh, effectively and efficiently, OK? So uh, when working in remote, uh, remote Scrum, um, a major roadblock to accomplish sprint goal is lack of engagement from the team members. So um, uh, one of the major responsibility of Scrum Master is to determine a communication method okay so uh, see, since we are working uh, remotely uh, it uh, it is uh, very likely that the team members concentration or focus is getting lost in between so uh, he need to devise a method in which the communication is done properly okay the scrum master so um, <clears throat> uh, do all the major meetings using video conferencing so through which uh, we could see whether mm -hmm. one person is indulged in a meeting or no or whether he or she is engaged in some other matter okay so another point is um, recording the important meetings uh, such as uh, planning uh, review and any important discussions such as uh, follow-up meetings that is uh, decision making on any technical implementation etc um, uh, so that the people can go back and um, uh, refer the same. OK, so uh, there are cases when um, uh, people may not be attending um, uh, the calls or uh, if they are in on leave or something like that, then they can go back uh, and uh, refer this particular uh, recording and uh, they can clarify whatever they need. OK. So if they have any doubts or if any any one of them uh, missed the meeting and uh, wants to know the discussion points, they they may do so by going back and referring it. But the Scrum Master uh, should give some meaningful uh, name to the recordings to avoid confusion. OK, and um, um, say uh, technical discussion on uh, the implementation of uh, so and so functionality or uh, sprint one demo mm -hmm. etc can be given as a, a name of that uh, particular recording so that next time uh, when uh, somebody comes back and wanted to uh, know about sprint one demo 
Uh, so what are the uh, precautionary uh, method, uh, uh, modes that they need to take for the next print? So they can uh, uh, easily go and uh, um, refer that. Okay. So the next point here is okay. um, um, the responsibility is to accommodate different time zones uh, while inviting for the meetings that the scrum master should take mm -hmm. care. So, you know, people might be working from different locations and time zones. So we need to know a, a viable time for every participant, isn't it? So somebody, uh, some people will be working from uh, India. Some people will be working from um, uh, US. So uh, we, uh, the Scrum Master is the person who need to know uh, which location this person is working, which uh, a time he will be available. And in order uh, uh, to make the meetings in order or uh, in order to make it smooth, he need to find a, um, a, a viable time uh, for uh, uh, everyone to participate in that particular meeting. So next thing is um, to uh, create a clear agenda for a specific meetings and share it through invites so that the team is uh, kept focused and do not lose time for discussions that are not relevant for all those uh, who are in the meeting. OK, for example, during Scrum meetings, if um, one of the developer is having some doubts on implementation uh, of a story and need more information, uh, if it is uh, uh, not supposed to be, uh, it, th those things are not supposed to be discussed in uh, the stand-up call. Rather, it should be done in a follow-up meeting. Standard agenda is to discuss on day-to-day -day activities and any impediments, if any. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the next responsibility is on uh, meeting invitation. So, Scrum Master should make sure that in, uh, he is inviting only the part, only the participants of that meeting, and uh, see to it that they accept the invites so that none of them are missed out of the uh, uh, any any important meetings okay so these are the extra steps uh, the scrum master should take uh, uh, in order to accomplish the sprint goal even while running in remote scrum so that's what um, my views are okay so I, i've got a query related to that i mean uh, is the scrum master supposed to uh, send out invites? I mean, uh, that is something new for me because uh, I have not seen it in the scrum guide. So do you think the scrum master needs to send out the invites? And also because uh, the scrum team is supposed to be self-sufficient, self-managed. They are supposed to be uh, doing self-management. So should uh, they have to do a, a meeting request or set an agenda? Uh, why do you feel there should be, uh, again, it might be something that you have done, but this is a query that came up in my mind. Hello? Did we lose Sunita? Uh, okay, so uh, probably we'll move to the next panelist to get uh, a different perspective. Um, Shajina, information security is a, a big uh, thing to be uh, implemented in an organization, whether it's following scrum or whether, whether it's following the uh, waterfall methods so how do you feel the current uh, uh, situation uh, the work from home situation has changed uh, how the sec information security was being implemented uh yeah uh, right rajit as you rightly said information security is a key important factor for any customer because uh, the organization, they'll be dealing with multiple customers. 
and for all customers uh, it's a mandate that their information has to be secured within the team members whoever is working with them so that's of very key importance and uh, the main challenge here is uh, how the information can be secure how we can win the confidence of the customer because winning the confidence that is going to be the uh, you know the door to new business uh, and that is something very important remote working uh, as we all know like this is a new normal and now the system has like defined their own process uh, and started implementing on how we have to run the projects that is the scrum team members projects now uh, speaking explicitly about information security first i like to start off with the definition the information security that refers to like how we are going to protect the information systems from the unauthorized access so here it's not like confined like we are not giving access to anybody no it's not like that it specifically lies in the cia triangle that is confidentiality integrity and availability confidentiality means like we are making sure all the information is confidential that scrum team members are maintaining the confidentiality of the information shared by the customer integrity means like whatever information is available it is in the full form so that the scrum teams can start working with the customer's data availability it uh, simply refers that like you know if the person is intended to get the information of the customer that team member has to be given access to that so it's not like completely you know locking the data no it's not like that whoever needs the access the intended person has to be given access to that that is what i refer to as a cia triangle and there are various international standards who uh, which defines on how the information security process and system has to be defined like iso 27001 that is explicitly one generic standard on information security there are various other standards also which uh, you know that are based on the region specific like uh, in uae we have the nisa that is national electronic and uh, safety authentication we have gdpr which is very specific to the europe regions and there are various other data uh, yeah, standards like iso 27701 which is explicitly on the privacy information management system that is like very uh, you know in case of like the healthcare division and not like the patient's information how the privacy of the information has to be maintained when this company is working with their data so there are various standards in the market the organization can select the appropriate standard which they feel can be implemented in the organization so as a first step to be done is like the definition of the process now when we are defining the process uh, it's not like uh, they can follow different method can select one particular standard and define the process or they can uh, the organization can take different standards take the good practices of all the standards and that process can be defined which the scrum team members can follow so as a first step we have to define the robust policies and procedures and guidelines with respect to information security when a scrum team is working with a customer's project what are the information security guidelines that has to be followed that has to be well defined now what is the proper risk assessment to be done now in the, uh, when i say risk assessment like this is something very key important in case of information security when we are handling the data we don't wait we should not rather wait for the problem to happen we have to foresee the risk in managing the information when we are running as a team and this company is doing their projects uh, we have to foresee the risk in the project and take necessary actions so that it doesn't become a problem into the project and they uh, they get stuck with the execution. So that should not happen. So mm -hmm. risk assessment, okay. prior risk assessment with proper action has to be taken. Now, as we know, like the remote system, there should be, uh, by now, almost all the organizations would have defined their own work from home guidelines. Mm -hmm. on for like if you are doing wfh like what is the information security that has to be taken care of when because you are not in your office uh you know uh place you are mm -hmm. in a different place where there will be some uh intrusion of different people into the system how that can be avoided definitely it is like you know as we say like create your own office space in your home with your scrum team member or any other thing create your own office space 
at your home and start working on the system. Now, once the definitions and all is done, like, oh, I missed one more part, like, you know, there are certain cases like uh, the customers would be demanding that when the scrum team members, because uh, now the customers are used to get continuous deliveries. They don't want the uh, the full product being delivered after some after a long period of time. No, they are not used to it. Now the customers they are used to get continuous deliveries. They want the scrum teams to be uh, you know continuously connected with them, giving them the product as the intermediate deliveries. Now, just because of that itself, like the customer is demanding that whenever the team members are working with their project, they expect a non-disclosure agreement to be signed, which the customer demands for. Customer would be having their own security guidelines, their own NDAs, which the company, the organization would be adapting, and the team members would also be instructed to have a signing of this NDAs. Now, uh, signing NDA doesn't mean that they are being locked into the system. As I told earlier, no, it's not like that. We are just explicitly, uh, the team is explicitly explained on like what are the information security practices that has to be followed when they are handling the data. It's as simple as that. Okay, so okay. that is about the process definition part. Now we go on to the execution aspects. How the information security practices, how the process can be executed. Now here we have different people, different role members who has to play the and make sure that the secure information is secure. One is the IT department in the organization. In any organization, there will be an IT department who will be you know, setting up the network and all. Further to that, there will be some team members' roles and responsibilities which they have to follow. Now, as an IT department, what the IT organizer, what the IT team does in the organization is that they'll be defining the network. The network designs and the server designs will be set up. For the scrum teams, mostly it will be a isolated network which should be defined for the demilitarized zone. DMZ zones would be created. Now, mm -hmm. uh, this separate network means that it is an isolated network completely uh, secured from the office internet. So, now, when the people are, when the scrum team members are logging from home, they'll be given the VPN, that is virtual private network access, through which they'll be logging into their DMC network with their login ID and passwords. So there is, you know, proper authentication methods at multiple stages, and their machine IPs would be uh, configured into the firewall, only that particular machine IPs. With machine IP, their proper identification and password, login ID, the identity would be evaluated, then only they'll be allowed to enter into the system. Once they enter the network, the DMC zone, then they are working as if like they are working in the office. In the DMC zones, probably the rules and policies would be set in such a way that there will be no uploads or downloads done into the local machines that will be purely, you know, uh, blocked. Then any external communications other than the customers or the within the scrum team members any external communications, the access to the external network would be completely limited. When I say limited, there may be cases where the business critical members who are part of the Scrum team and all, they'll be need to like have communications with the external network. In such cases, there'll be spe special privileges being assigned for certain members, wherein with certain mail lists will be, emails will be whitelisted so that they'll be able to make communications with the the external network that is the customers or be it any other persons so such way of uh, okay. Okay. we can have uh, access but a limited access controlled access with proper monitoring okay. so once the secured network okay. is set the teams can start working into their system then they will have might uh, uh, before prior to the start of the project itself all the team members it's a very mandate that customer would demand like you know, they should be given training on the information security guidelines, how they have to operate, like when they are working in the customer's machine or uh, customer's data, what has to be like where they have to download the data, they have to work in the configuration management system only. There should be a defined working folder for each Scrum team member where they'll be downloading the data, they'll be doing their work and then uploading into the configuration management system. So there is proper, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rules and responsibilities which would be discussed with these company members at the start of the project. Further to that, they'll be able to take it over. Whenever a new team member comes into the system, they will also be given specific trainings to this particular uh, you know, rules and responsibilities so that 
they will also be take it, uh, able to take it forward following the information security mm -hmm. guidelines. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, the IT team, what they have to make sure is like, you know, to ensure that there is no other encroachment of the, uh, any other external factors, we have to make sure the system is up to date. That is, uh, when the system has to work remote now, the uh, configuration of, of the system should also be in a higher level. Like there should be, uh, you know, uh, definitions like the system should be above, like Windows should be above seven. Uh, all the patches should be up to date in the system. All the security patches should be regularly installed into the system. Mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, patch, uh, and the users also, the scrum team members also would be given instruction when they are getting a patch notification. But if at all the IT team like uh, pushes in the uh, patches in the system, there are certain cases these scrum team members will also have to do some manual updates. So they will be given instruction to do the manual patches updates. If at all they face any issues in doing the patch update, they, they can definitely get in touch with the IT team. If the patch update is not being properly done, then uh, that will be notified. The IT team also would be getting notification. Then they'd be taking necessary actions by quarantining the system. And then once it's up to date, that would be put into the connected to the DMC network. Then only they'll be able to connect into the network. Because until that point of time, the system is vulnerable. So they cannot get in. They should not be able to get connected into the system. Okay. Okay. Any outdated okay. systems, any outdated systems would be quarantined in such a way that uh, it's not like we are not allowing the team members to not to work. No, it's not like that. It's just a pure discipline what uh, the team is, uh, the organization is going to define. Like if your system is outdated, the system will be quarantined, and once it's up to date, it will be brought back to the system. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Now, as users, we also make uh, as team members, we also need to make sure that they are regularly changing their passwords because there are now in work from home situations and all like very strict password guidelines are given. Uh, because like once in a month, uh, if the password has to be changed, if the password is not changed, they will not be able to log into the system. So uh, these team members also has to you know, come into the path and try to. Uh, you know, change the passwords regularly and try mm -hmm. to avoid uh, saving the passwords because to avoid okay. all the uh, situations which is happening. Now we mm -hmm. have defined the problems, we have executed the system. Now we also need a mesh uh, system in which, like, we may need to make sure that this is happening. So the IT team, what they would be doing is like they'll be continuously checking the machines whether they are up to date or not. Where uh, if at all they are getting any any uh, you know fault logs into the firewall whenever there is an unauthorized access or unintended access mm -hmm. coming into the system the it team would be able to get those logs from the firewall and there are different systems and softwares which is defined from which they will be getting the fault logs and once the fault logs are you know identified they'll be able to know like what is the which machine is the fault or creating system and that would be quarantined once it's up to date, that will be brought back to the system. That is how it is okay. done. Okay. So okay. Uh, that is a different information security process, the definitions, the guidelines, and the uh, monitoring systems which can be introduced into the system uh, as far as my experience for the team. Okay. Well, thank you for the elaborate uh, update, Shajina. Uh, Ratish, uh, coming to you, you have been working or associated with uh, financial institutions where uh, the infrastructure plays a major role uh, in, in the day-to-day -day activities or for uh, customer interaction. What were the major challenges that you faced uh, uh, while the whole team was moved to work from home? And how was the business continuity ensured uh, during the pandemic okay okay so yeah as as i said earlier uh, i am working mostly with the, the north american clients and uh, most of them are in financial domain and there was a potential impact initially uh, i could explain it with uh, some examples actually Basically, the lockdown and this uh, very crisis forced uh, people to adapt to start mass work from home options for the entire structure without uh, without any breathing time. 
so as shachina mentioned in her uh, discussion like the the info, mm -hmm. information security team implies a lot of policies and they uh, enforce the team to connect the uh, infrastructure through a tunnel or the virtual private network and that was the initial uh, hurdle basically so the vpn basically the vpn capacity was the uh, initial hurdle so uh, most of the banks uh, or financial institutions doesn't have the capability to onboard the entire crew to the uh, system or the working environment from remotely so um, uh, basically uh, i can i could say both business and technology got affected uh, because of this infrastructure issues and what the management did is they come up with a quick action plan and uh, basically the high level officials connected it's not only with one bank but uh, uh, the all the banks and their uh, associated organization connected together and uh, uh, <clears throat> asked for a solution so uh, what they basically did is like uh, they identify the top 10 business and technology operations which need to be addressed immediately and the first uh, three to four days, uh, I mean, uh, initially only the top 10 operations, that means the business operations were allowed to connect during office hours, which means uh, nine to five, okay? Uh, so that uh, there won't be any business interruption initially. And after that, the uh, uh, the, uh, the office hours, uh, the, the other operations like the technology teams, others are connected to the system, okay? And within three to four days, uh, I seen this in, in real my experience, within three to four days, uh, the, the infrastructure team were uh, working overnight uh, and uh, with the help of the internal and extra external uh, infrastructure team, they slowly scaled up the capacity, the VPN capacity, and they uh, do a dry run with uh, the top 10 business operations as well as the technology operations connect to the office time. And, and I seen that in within three weeks, uh, the entire infra team, I mean, the infra team uh, was able to make the entire workforce was, uh, I mean, work remotely without a technical uh, connection issues and glitches, okay? So this unpercentage situation can happen anytime in future too, but Right now, the infra is well equipped to cope up with uh, the increasing challenges and demands or situation within no time. So that's a situation right now in, in I am seeing in this financial uh, institutions. OK, so that was about the people who are actually working in the banks. So how did it affect the uh, actual end customers? How yeah. did they, uh, the operations, day-to-day yeah, -day yeah. operations? Yeah, that that the good the good question, uh, Rajit. Because in fact, we are discussing about the technology and business people, but in the real consumer or user perspective, uh, there was also a huge impact. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened is like, even the banks were open uh, for business, but the user walk-in volume to the teller was dramatically de decreased because of this mm -hmm. COVID thing. Okay, so that is like a major decline into the business. Okay, so the people really need a system onboarding basically the onboarding system to grab their banking products right so that was the uh, that was the key uh, i mean game changer actually so what the bank did is like they immediately considered 100 percentage automation of the onboarding process which uh, onboarding process okay. means which includes like uh, submitting a form from their home uh doc uploading the documents and identity verifications legal and security verifications then uh, signing the uh, legal contracts etc all these processes uh or automation of all these processes considered as a high priority item and i think it, now it's almost one year right so all, almost all the mm -hmm. banks in north america they have right now uh the complete the a user don't want to now a user doesn't want to go to the client uh, teller they can do everything from home and okay. earlier the scenario was like okay he has to book uh, a one hour meeting he has to commute to the bank and it's like a two to three hour process now it's like a 15 minute process okay they can do it from home okay. so that is the user perspective and i can connect to the business Okay, so yeah. uh, the pandemic has made the life easier for uh, end users. 
of course of course in many perspective because there are there are certain products that uh, can do from home like this buying bank account so for example i'll tell you some uh, typical example mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. opening a bank account okay renewing a mortgage okay taking a new mortgage and renewing for a credit card credit card uh, i mean limit increasing all these can you you can do now from home without without going going to the teller okay okay yeah yeah that's true i mean uh, i have i have heard or uh, learned about the uh, uh, opening up a new bank account but i was not aware of uh, uh, the mortgage thing uh, oh, that okay. they are automated so that's that's uh, and, new news yeah and the campaign also there they introduce a lot of campaign related applications so now AI related campaigns they introduced as part as part of the pandemic so uh, they will assess the user behavior online because users are connecting from remotely through phones or from their desktop so that all these AI engines uh, identify uh, everything I mean uh, everything remotely then they will push the particular campaigns to the users so for example a mortgage is going to expire in six months or seven months so the system automatically identifies and it will inform the user in regular intervals okay your your mortgage is going to going to i mean mm -hmm. you will get better rate and uh, the system drive itself and again the user doesn't want to go to the bank so if once he clicked in the campaign then the onboarding process or the renewal process will automatically uh, kick off kick off okay then it will complete the entire process within within 15 minutes <laughs> not 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 on 15 minutes it's more than if it is a renewal process he don't want to upload the document again so it's like maybe three to three to four screens uh navigations that's it wow oh, wow well, that's interesting yeah, yeah. so uh prasad this might be the uh, final uh, query for you uh how do you feel that yes. uh as a scrum master how do you uh, how do you evaluate the effectiveness of scrum team now that uh, the teams are not uh, co-located everyone is uh, far away so how do you have to evaluate each individual or uh, how do you evaluate them uh, normally, as per agile thing, we don't evaluate as a personal performance or thing, and we don't uh, mm -hmm. do that in the public. But um, as a scrum master, as a facilitator, we have to ensure that the team is performing well. And we have certain points where we can evaluate the team's performances, like we have the uh, uh, review and we have stand-up meetings. So in the stand-up meeting, you can just make ensure that the people are all in the team and, and update, see how the trend is going. Are they giving the daily improvement updates and all? But as an agile and uh, thing, we don't immediately give any feedbacks and all on this. And uh, we personally call them data determinant or, uh, you know, uh, seeing the trend of it, understanding and just get go and call them and or have a personal you know break or now it is like you know you need to have uh, connect like vc calls mostly and then understand why that is there is no improvement and is there any impediment happening so that is one of the thing is the, are the impediments uh, reported on time that is also one thing we have to check are these impediments corrected on time that's also we have to uh, check this is the evaluating points and for this to may ensure as Sajina, um, I think I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, Sajina took this point, uh, she, we need to create a chat box like mostly maybe a Teams, maybe somewhere else or maybe uh, a group where they can give an update also apart from the uh, daily standard meeting to so that they can immediately report uh, uh, in, impediments if there are any so that the scrum master or the product owner are also aware about the stand the the status of the uh, process how it is going okay this is the impediment and all so we need to we have we these are the ways to evaluate and also one more thing as which is where the role of the scrum master comes in place is the retrospective is i can say that is one 
kind of I cannot I should not use that stick in hand kind of thing, but it's not the right word to use. But I'm not finding it another one. Yes, this is a play. That's a tea, that's a event when it happens retrospective. Uh, earlier we used to use posters and understand the you know what what was good and what was bad and all those things. And so now uh, we are used more into. Um, uh, what do you say? We use uh, Neuro and uh, some uh, tools like Jira and all those things to update mm -hmm. this status and evaluate the team. And we can also evaluate through Jira, like understanding the burn down charts to see uh, how the team works, how the trend is going from past two, three months. But as, as a scrum master and as a trainer, from my personal point, we don't give any feedbacks immediately to the person when you see something there. So we give them some time to correct themselves and come back with that. If that trend is going for one, two times a second, then there should be a, a one to one sessions happen. Otherwise, to just to view it, we have the retrospective and the Jira burn down charts and uh, velocity charts to understand the trend, how it goes in this. Scrum. OK, OK. Uh, Sunita, one uh, final question. Uh, do you feel communication is the biggest challenge uh, while running Scrum remotely? Yes, I do believe communication is the biggest challenge uh, because um, uh, we need to have uh, a certain um, uh, collaboration tools and then, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Jira like tools. Uh, the virtual board, uh, then um, we need to have uh, Slack or Skype for chat communication, uh, Gmeet or Teams or Zoom for um, uh, video conferencing. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, earlier, um, actually, uh, if you uh, had asked me this question 10 to 15 years back, um, our uh, concept was to have the Scrum uh, team in a co-located area, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now yes. uh, uh, the things have been changed so much that um, we may not get talents uh, from uh, one particular place. We need to hunt uh, for talents from different places and um, uh, they are available only uh, in different places. and. Um, uh, different location so in order to make use of this availability we started having this distributed scrum mode or um, uh, you, you call it us distributed scrum mode right so uh, mm, managing yeah. scrum team remotely is not at all a new thing for us so it is uh, uh, we already started with it earlier isn't it mm. so uh, communication yeah. is the major problem here so how do we tackle that is a, a major challenge. And um, uh, we can do, uh, we have a certain mechanisms to do that uh, through using uh, co uh, collaborative tools and then uh, organizing. Uh, see, the meetings here uh, are very dry, isn't it? So in order to make mm -hmm. it lively, we need to uh, organize for fun at work. And we, we need to have informal talks and um, yeah. Uh, uh, also, we need to make sure that uh, the participation in daily scrum is a must. So uh, mm. uh, 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 this is very much essential for remote scrum. Okay, so so that uh, we can discuss on um, uh, uh, the, the risk and issues that uh, uh, we are facing uh, on the progression of the stories or task. Mm? And um, okay. Uh, another challenge is like uh, the, the sprint backlog. So earlier, uh, uh, the sprint back, uh, backlog or uh, uh, the stories which was written was very concise manner. And uh, people mm -hmm. were like um, uh, not bothered to elaborate on the things or not bothered to write acceptance criteria elaborately. So now uh, this is not the case. So everything should be uh, 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 what do you say, uh, documented so that there should not be any ambiguity on the sprint items. Mm -hmm. So okay. this is what I think we can tackle. This is how I think we can tackle this. Okay. Yeah. So Hi, everyone.
um, we have a hard stop here. We are a little over time. Yeah. So probably yeah, for yeah, the so going to uh, end the discussion anyway. So yeah. Um, so, uh, if the audience they have any questions, they can probably text you on LinkedIn or they can reach out to you on your emails if that's okay with you. Yes. With all the panelists. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. So thank thank you, so you everyone much. for the wonderful uh, uh, discussion. Uh, it was nice uh, having the chat. Good going. Great, great show, team. Well done. Yeah, good going. Great, great show, team. Well done.